What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, very special guest. We got Mylon Murphy with us today. Clap it up. Mylon, thank you for taking the time out, man. Appreciate you. No, definitely. Thank you for having me, man. I'm excited to talk with you. Yeah, yes, sir. So, yeah, let's jump right into it. So, tell the world who you are as Mylon and, like, some of your background on the platforms you've grown and your past experience as a collegiate athlete. Definitely, definitely. So, Mylon Murphy, known as Motivated by Mylon on social media. Um, just to give a, a quick overview, um, started a clothing line when I was 13. And at that time, I was playing basketball, obviously. Uh, became a Division One recruit. Um, was still running the clothing line. Ended up breaking my leg. All of my offers fell through. Um, I still ended up getting a phone call from school called Northern Michigan University. Uh, they brought me there. That's why I play college basketball. Ever since then, Obviously, I've always had my hand in something um, entrepreneurial wise, but really everything social media wise sort of was born when the pandemic hit. Um, I, I was a motivational speaker at the time that was stripped. I couldn't go to any schools and kids were asking me, like, do you have a TikTok account? And I'm like, no, I'm not on TikTok, you know, <laughs> um, but the pandemic hit and it was like, you know what, this might be a good opportunity for me to connect uh, with that audience, not through my voice, but through my actions. So I started my platform, man. And the whole point behind it was just to give kids and, you know, even high schoolers ways to get better at home with little to no resources because everything was shut down where I was. You couldn't go to a store everywhere, you know? Um, so I just started thinking of ideas for people to get better, um, work on their game with, household items and it sort of evolved from there man it's turned into decor it's turned into trophies sneaker hacks um all type of stuff now man and um you know i'm just having fun but it's just been crazy Six hundred thousand followers later here i am and it's just like uh it it's been just so awesome to be able to reach a global audience man and you know Definitely. i'm just to build the platform that i have so far yeah, and that's the beauty in like being in quarantine where now you gotta figure out ways to stay connected with other people, even more so than what you know we as a society do now. So yeah, Absolutely. you took that and ran with it for sure. <laughs> a thousand, that's, that's big time. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, you know, it's just it was one of those things that was either gonna make you or break you, you know. Right. Um, I, I said I was gonna do something with the whole quarantine, stay at home orders, and that's what I chose to do. Uh, yeah. you know, continue motivating from afar. For sure. So those 600,000 followers, talk to us about like how you like the kind of actions you take to motivate and inspire and, you know, basically inspire a community to take action. Definitely. So basically going back to the point of I think it all comes down to resources and especially um, being a black male, a black um, athlete, you typically grow up in areas where you don't have many resources. Um, yeah. So that was the basis, not minorities in general for anybody, but the basis of this was, okay, everyone's stripped of their resources. Let's figure out a way how to pivot with little to no resources. So that was the whole action aspect of it. Um, letting people know that you don't have to have the top, you know, top of the line sneaker, your top of the line equipment. You can get things done with a laundry hamper. I made a, a DIY rebounder with that or a bed sheet. Um, the smallest little things, I think that that's the action aspect of it. Um, and then from there, the motivation and the inspiration is just trying to basically pass along to the next person what I'm instilling in them. You know what I mean? So that's what keeps me going, just trying to make sure that that next person, um, whatever video I put out, at least if it's if it's helping one person, that's all that matters to me. Exactly. You touch one person and the job is done. Because then that person tells the next person. And it's that travels from there. Yep. Yeah. So touch on like your family and like, you know, we all of our mothers, right? So how big of an impact they've had on your career and the inspiration they provide. Definitely, man. I mean, family's everything. Um, obviously, I have an older brother. Um, it's just him and I. And growing up, I mean, that was my guy. He took me everywhere. We're six years apart, but he took me under his wing and, uh, my family at that point, we were together when I was 13, my parents divorced. And from there I went to live with my mom and we struggled. And, and that was part of the reason why I started the clothing line was just to help her out financially. Mm -hmm. um, and my mother and I were extremely close, extremely close. And unfortunately 
lost her to breast cancer a few years, two years ago. And um, obviously my whole world turned upside down. I wasn't doing the social media thing at the time, um, but it's one of those things until you experience it, um, you just don't know how it's gonna hit you because my mother's passing was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. But at the same time, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me, if that makes any sense. Um, just in the sense of making her proud, you yeah. live your life, your eyes are open completely different. Um, you live your life knowing that this is what she would want or knowing that you're making a problem. That's just that extra motivation, that extra grind that it gives you. Um, so I mean, I've done a lot since she's passed away these, these short two years. Um, and you know, those are all things I know that she would be extremely proud of. So. Absolutely. You know, she lives through you. So whatever you're doing, she's doing it along with you. you know? Definitely. Definitely. So how, talk about like, you know, your mom and just like the effects of like breast cancer and like why people should definitely get screened early and take like the, the necessary measures to put their health first, you know? Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, honestly, um, I remember I was sitting with my wife at the table. I remember when she first told us, you know, that she had breast cancer and it's one of those things where so many thoughts, just thoughts and emotions just start racing, you know? Um, but as a minority, as a black woman, basically going through that process with her, I never missed the doctor's appointment. I never missed the hospital visit. I was there with her through everything. And I learned a lot. Um, and the whole point of this interview is to hopefully enlighten and educate, you know, the, the viewers out there, because my mom, she detected breast cancer late. And I learned that in black women, their tissue is thicker. So for instance, in her breast, the, the tissue was thicker. So she didn't even notice anything or lump of any of that nature until it was kind of too late. So the, it leads to a lot of late detections, especially in black women and minorities. So it's just so important to stay up on everything. Not that she wasn't staying up on anything. It's just right. the simple fact of how our bodies are made. It's just extremely important. I learned so much about that process, um, but just health in general, man, like I feel like minorities have, um, I don't want to say a disadvantage when it comes to health, but I think a lot of different topics, um, minorities have to stay um, on their health a lot differently, uh, even males, you know, so it was just, man, that was a, a very, very, um, obviously the hardest, hardest time of my life, but a very educational period for me, man. I learned so much about the woman's body, a black woman's body, but then breast cancer in itself. And I, I realized how many people are going through this and sure. what it entails. Our process was fairly, fairly quick, you know? And yeah, and like you mentioned with minorities and just like health and things like that, like you notice in more affluent neighborhoods where like minorities aren't really like the major population, just the access to like simple things is like healthier food, whereas like in our communities, McDonald's on every corner, Burger King, a liquor store. Yeah, yeah exactly. The thing is that, you know, and the lifestyle too, where it's just like doesn't help these situations, especially, you know, you think about the long term and, you know, what it does to our bodies. So no, definitely yeah. just keeping people like in mind and like, I want to say wary, but just, just keep it in mind. Like, all right, you want to live a more healthier lifestyle so you can live a longer life, hey. prevent things, you know, so. You hit it right on the head because there, there were things that it's, once you get in that system of healthcare, you find out all this information after the fact or during, and you're like, man, like, I wish I would have known that before, like her right. dieting at that time. I mean, if she only had known the way that she's supposed to be dieting, that would have helped not grow the particular tumor, things like that. Like you yeah. don't even know that stuff until you get to the doctor and it's too yeah. late or it's already so big, they can't do much. Um, so yeah, man, like, like you said, dieting is so important. Just, yeah. you know how, I mean, you can just die. Like, yeah, really, I mean, yeah. it's just, it, it's so important, man. And you, you want to make sure you stay on top of it before it's too late, you know? And then in closing, you know, I, I, I hear and feel the passion about the work you're doing, things like that. 
and us at you know JD Sports and Finish Line just doing community voices to other voices like yours to you know tell the audience and you know real stories and like real life situations that they could really connect to and understand. So that's said, we'd like to make a donation to not just October, um, basically named after your or just like in honor of your mother, right? Absolutely, not just October is a breast cancer awareness organization uh, based in Akron, Ohio, founded by LeVar Jacobs Sr. And basically, man, I mean, the title of that organization says it all. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you have breast cancer awareness where you see in sports, they're wearing pink gloves, pink shoes, pink cleats, you know, things like that. That's awesome. Like, I mean, that's what you need is that awareness, enlightening people, but not, not just October. What their mission is, is this is 365. Like this right. isn't just one month. You know what I mean? Like awareness is every single day. Um, and it's not about one month, not just October, but it's about every day of your life. And the things that they do with their organization is just very admirable. Um, they help obviously breast cancer patients that are currently going through chemo treatments, different things, but they also help the survivors as well, whether it's cutting grass or just simple gestures of delivering flowers. Um, they're just, it's an awesome organization. We personally didn't even have um, encounters with them through my mother. Um, right. but I've just seen other people and the way that they're helping people is just like oh man it's just right. admirable so i'm just i'm i'm glad to be able to choose them you know and work with them on that and i i thank you guys for the donation because i i know for a fact it's going to go to a great cause it's going to go to some some really great women that need it so absolutely and that's like you know the beauty of what we do every week we donate to every like different organizations and we know from these real stories that we have is those dollars are really getting put to use. So yeah, you know, um, thank you for sharing your story, just like your experiences and enlightening the people as well, just to, you know, stay healthy and just like get physicals and more doctors, like, you know, all types of things just to be more health conscious, you know? So with that said, it's a conclusion. I'll let you have the last word. Oh, no, like I said, man, thanks again. Um, you know, obviously everyone just enjoy the holidays, but try to be safe. Like you said, stay up on your physical, stay up on your general maintenance. You know, yeah. you're, you can't, you can't buy health. You can't buy that. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. Hope you guys follow your passion, follow your purpose. And, you know, again, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Absolutely, man. All right, cool. Again, Mylon, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. We'll talk soon. Definitely. Sounds good. I appreciate you. Yes, sir.